Stewart here for the Ask Stewart Hour. Lori, someone last week talked about making about $5,000 for the Rotary Club with a cruise raffle. I don't remember who that was. Who was that? So somebody talked about making $5,000 for their Rotary Club with a cruise raffle. And I'm, I'm continuing to read. I was wondering if they could share more specifics. Well, here's the deal. I don't remember who that was. I'm going to make a note here because, because I can go back and look at the notes, um, Lori. And I, if, if they're not going to be on this session, Lori, then I'll find out who it was. And we'll figure out how they did it because I don't want to make any assumptions that I know how they did it. When they say they made $5,000 on a cruise raffle, uh, I don't know if they got the cruise donated, you know what I mean? And they, uh, you know, as part of a charity thing and everyone bought a $20 ticket, a $100 ticket. And so that money went to charity. Well, I'm not sure if that $5,000 was profit. So let me keep reading what you wrote here. We're doing that with our club and would love to have a conversation with them. Okay, Lori, I, I guarantee you that I will find out who that was. Now, tell me, if you would, Lori, a little bit about what you're doing with, with your club. Are you uh, selling the cruise? And uh, how are you going to include a raffle in there? And would the would the proceeds from that raffle be uh Part of a charity, a fundraiser, or pure profit? Are you raffling off a cruise? If you can give me a little more details. And by the way, any of you who are in uh, at the Ask Stewart Hour, we just had a rush of people come in. So welcome. I'm really, really glad you're here. Uh, but at any time, if you please, you know, could type something in here, and I'm going to do my best to keep up with all the questions in the comments. But um, just tell me uh, if you'd like me to. Uh, unmute your microphone, uh, but you need to do it at your end first. So if you unmute your mic, uh, let me know and I'll unmute your mic and then we can hear your voice. You could make your comment, you can ask your question, and then you can go back on mute. That's fine. Mitch was bold enough last time to, to do it. He was the first. Uh, so I'm really uh, grateful. So let me know if you want to do that. So Lori, I'm, I'm reading your next comment. Oh, you're purchasing an incentive coupon. Okay. All right. I get it. You're purchasing an incentive coupon. It's a fundraiser for charity. I'm reading this so that everybody hears what we're talking about. We're talking about a fundraising group here. Uh, and Lori is doing this with her uh, club. And somebody on our last Ask Stewart Hour mentioned uh, that they had done this and had generated $5,000. And I don't remember who it was. So if you're on right now, please volunteer yourself so we know because uh, I want to connect the two of you uh, and Lori said that she's purchasing the those incentive coupons uh, from a cruise line and it's fundraised for charity sold tickets last year for $25 per ticket and limited it to $250 tickets uh, but only ended up selling about 200 okay so you wanted to sell a total of 250 tickets but you only ended up selling about 200. So I'm trying to figure out this year how to maximize the profit. Okay. Um, and that incentive certificate is going to be the prize if I'm reading this right. Uh, well, I got to tell you um, how to maximize your profit on. So Lori, just tell me, maximize the profit on selling those tickets or converting them to cruise sales. Just connect the dots for me. Right, 250. Connect the dots for me and I'll see if I can. Uh, so more tickets for less money. So you want to be able to sell more tickets for less money. Um, well, you know, it depends on how big your audience is that you're going after to try to sell these, these tickets to. I don't know if you want to stand in front of the local Kroger and sell the tickets there, or if it's through a specific club or organization. Are the people in the club and the organization also responsible for selling tickets to their friends and family? How big of a network do you have going on uh, to expand sales? Uh, welcome Mitch. I'm going to wait for Lori to type in next, but I want to do some welcomes here. Welcome Jenny. Welcome Judy. Welcome Kyle. Kyle is our guest today. It's really cool that you're here. Kyle, you can just be a fly in the wall and listen in, or you can ask a question. You can contribute and help out our other agents here in boot camp. Uh, Lori's in it. We've been talking to Lori. Mitch, welcome. And Sharon, welcome. And I do have a few announcements to let you guys know about, uh, but I'm really, really grateful you're here on this uh, Ask Stuart Hour. Um, 
Lori, I have a feeling, and forgive me for this, but I'm not connecting the dots with this fundraiser here, and I want to help you. So if we can't resolve it on the Ask Stuart hour, why don't we connect offline? Why don't we? So the, the whole idea is you purchased an incentive cruise coupon, okay, and you're going to raffle that off, and you want to maximize uh, those raffle sales. You were selling raffles for $20. You wanted to sell uh, sell them out at $250, but you only sold $200. Um, Lori, no, I'm just trying to find out what she did. They may limit the tickets, or did they sell an unlimited amount for less money? Really just trying to connect with her to find out what was successful for her. Don't want to tie up the group stuff. Okay, no, that's fine. Cool. So, Lori, as I said before, I guarantee you, I'll find out which agent it was, and I will connect the two of you. So this is great. I'm glad that we have this forum. I'm glad that that came up because this is not just about me talking and blabbing away a lot of hot air here. Uh, of course, I hope it helps, but uh, connecting you guys and sharing best practices. So if an issue comes up, an opportunity comes up, a challenge comes up, uh, hopefully you can share a success or even if you did something that failed miserably. Because if you share something with us that didn't work, We'll all know not to do it the next time, and you'll be our lifesaver, right? All right, so we're going to open up. Uh, I'm going back to the question box here. So as you guys are typing in uh, questions, comments, suggestions, I have some quick updates for you while you're typing some stuff in. So here we go. Uh, I welcomed in Kyle as our new guest. Welcome, Kyle. Uh, Clavy is not here yet. She is our newest in boot camp, and I think she's going to be joining us at some point. Um, okay, I... Uh, I just this morning added to the experts library. Remember we talked about books. You guys asked me if I had any good books to recommend. And I was like, oh, of course I do, but I can't remember them. Uh, and then Mitch had suggested, thank you, Mitch, that perhaps I list them in the experts library. So don't do it now. Don't, I don't want you to risk you Xing out and unless you're really, really talented and can do that, uh, opening up another tab. But, if you go into the experts library, you'll see uh, there's a new entry at the bottom. I list uh, a bunch of books. How many books did I list? Like um, 12 books, a dozen books that I specifically recall really, really enjoyed reading. There's a bunch more that I found on my shelf that I haven't read in a long time that I'm uh, like a book called Raving Fans, a uh, book by Conrad Hilton. Um, I might want to reread to make sure I still like it. I don't remember it. A lot of times, I, you know, you read a book and it just stays with you. So there was like, Who Moved My Cheese? Did any of you read Who Moved My Cheese? It's an extraordinary book. It's really excellent in all of its simplicity. It's great. And I remember that vividly, but I'm not going to recommend a book I don't remember. So check that out. Next thing. Um, uh, I, I just want to float this here as a question. Did uh, I think some of you attended the, the webinar uh, panel that I did on Monday of last week, right? That was with, uh, that was with, uh, Alex Pinello, uh, VP at Norwegian Cruise Line. That was with Keith uh, from uh, Celebrity, Keith Lane, VP at Celebrity. And we uh, talked about uh, group rates dropping after it, uh, if you've blocked the group. And I'm curious, did any of you attend and did you enjoy it? Did you have any comments? Because I'd like to set up an ongoing series of that where I have panel conversations addressing uh, some issues. And it would be great to get a supplier perspective on that so let me stop there i'm going to go to the uh the question box here and uh kyle says that he read who moved my cheese excellent uh i glad you did i reference it sometimes in my speeches and sometimes my writing but i will tell you this in 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 life not just in business but in life i i really embrace that concept um and I just want to share something with you guys. You know, when, when we're selling something or when we want to achieve something and we have a set of expectations that a business will buy from us, that a person will buy from us, that a person will do something we want them to do. That's our cheese, right? We, we set a goal in our mind and we go to achieve it. That's our getting that is our cheese. Well, normally that involves somebody doing something that we want them to do. And if they don't, uh, then the cheese has been moved. Right. So who moved my cheese? Well, the other guy did. Right. Somebody else moved my cheese. So let me just give you a twist, if I might. Um, there's no doubt we, we need we need to we need to follow that cheese. Um, but 
I think it's equally as important, if not more so, that we don't wait for somebody else to move our cheese, that we move our own cheese. That we actually uh, set a goal. It's all about goal planning, our own goal. And it, we, we're not relying on uh, other people to come through or to deliver. We're going to achieve something. So we set the cheese. So we moved our own cheese before somebody else had a chance to move it. Set your own goals um, and accomplish it. And with that, I just ripped this out of the newspaper this morning. Um, this, this is more, my quote of the day. I posted it on Facebook. I don't know if you guys saw it. I'll share it. Then I'm going to go back here and see what you guys have been sharing with me because this is your session, not my agenda. Um, it's, uh, it's, this is the quote. All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to, pro uh, to poverty. And guess what? That is Proverbs. Yes, it's actually from uh, the Old Testament, Hebrew Scripture, uh, the Bible, Proverbs 14.23. And it just got me today because um, if we just talk the talk and we don't walk the walk, Nothing gets done. That's really what it says. So I just wanted to put that out there. All right, let's see who uh, Mitch says. Superb panel would love that transcript and their contact information as well. Um, well, I got to tell you something. Um, something about that panel. The good news was I felt it went great. I really did. And and Keith and Alex were pleased. And Mitch, thank you for sharing. And Kyle, uh, you attended too. Great insight, um, which... I'll get to your question in just a second, uh, Kyle. Uh, but also, um, I recorded the, it. But guess what? The recording failed. Eeks! So whoever was there and lucky enough to attend it got the treat. What happened was the, it recorded the visual of the three screens of us talking. It only captured my voice. It didn't capture their voice. Something was running in the settings. It's entirely user error, um, and I'm really bummed about that, but it is what it is. We had the event, and I got to move on. So there's no – Mitch, unless you want the transcript of just me jabbering away, you can have it. Or if you could lip sync really well, I'm more than happy to share the video with you because you're an expert lip syncer. Perhaps you can make the transcript for us, but that's all we got. Uh, Kyle asked, um, do I see Royal – uh, does the Royal is going to stop last minute discounting a longer cruise of 30 days of sailing? Yes, this was just in, I think, uh, one of the news briefs, I think, from Asta that Royal has announced. I'm going to say it slow so that everybody uh, can understand this. Thank you, Kyle, for sharing this, that Royal Caribbean is going to stop last minute discounting on longer cruises within 30 days of sailing. And I think that's great. That's an awesome, awesome commitment uh, to make. Because it's price, price stabilization, it minimizes the impact it's going to have on our bookings or your bookings that you currently have, and certainly um, your groups too, right? And what could be worse than getting a phone call from a client within 30 days of departure saying, oh, I just saw that they lower their price, so shouldn't we get a lower price? I mean, that was what the whole panel was all about. And within 30 days, it stinks even more because then you've got to make a move really fast. You've got to figure out what you're going to do. Worst thing is, I think, is to give the money back, all right? Because after all, you created a package, remember? Nothing is dollar for dollar here. Everything is baked into a package. Uh, but but you got to get in line with that cruise line. Hopefully, you know it before your client knows it and see what – and that was one of the essence of, of the panel that we had, which was get on line with that supplier, that cruise line, and say, okay, you dropped your price. What are you going to do for me? Help me out here. And it may not be monetary. But it may, they may be able to help you out in other ways, in other ways, other creative ways. Uh, and and, and um, if nobody in the group finds out, that's great. You can give a gift to them. But if somebody does, you can nip it in the butt, right? Okay, let's go here. Thank you, Kyle, for that. Uh, Judy, last week's webinar with Cruise Success was very good. Thank you. would love to have them speak uh, to meetings and incentives. Would you be playing this in the near future? Yes, Judy, yes. Uh, clearly, there was uh, some interesting dialogue about the corporate groups. I just want to make a note here. And, um, you know, I have a one module in boot camp. I don't know if you've seen it yet, uh, Judy, on corporate groups. It's a good overview. I have a lot more information. I was thinking of producing a, 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 almost a separate boot camp on groups alone because it's, an, it's really entirely different. 
I don't know if any of you have done corporate groups, but it's really different corporate groups, incentives, meetings, and so forth. Um, so the answer is absolutely yes. I want to, in fact, Alex recommended their corporate group specialist. And if you've been in boot camp, you've seen that I already interviewed Ron Golaski from Celebrity. He's their global director of corporate sales. He's a very good friend of mine. And he just, he loves sharing about corporate groups. So I'm thinking of bringing a panel in about corporate groups. Uh, hopefully you guys would like to see that. I know it may not be for all of you, but it may be for some of you. And that's okay. The way I see it is groups is certainly a niche, but it's a very broad niche. So I think to creating a sub niche as focused as you can get within the group niche is awesome. Is awesome. So let's see. I just want to see who else has joined us here. Deb has joined us. Welcome, Deb. Uh, who else has joined us since? Oh, okay. Just Deb has joined us so far since. So I'm glad you're here. Uh, Mitch, I need to rehearse. Huh? Dead air, not a good thing. Dead air, not a good. I don't know what that means. Can you guys hear me okay? Um, oh, the. Uh, yes. In terms of the recording is what you're referring to, Mitch. I know. I got you. I actually did a test and it worked. So I don't know what failed. But it ain't never going to fail again, I assure you. Mitch, glad to see uh, Beta test another corporate group boot camp for you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think we're going to do it. Hey, Deb, uh, sorry I'm late. That's okay. Remember what I said about the S. Stewart hour. If, you know, I don't care. Come a little late. Come in a little early if you want. Um, and if you got to leave early, that's okay. I respect your time because one of the things about boot camp is that I really try not to schedule webinars. I mean, that panel was definitely a scheduled webinar, but the beauty of boot camp is click and play, do what you want when you want, right? But the S. Stewart hour has to be scheduled. And I, I, I kind of pick different dates and times every other week. And I understand sometimes you got to go. Things got to happen. So welcome. That's cool. I'm glad I'm coming through. Good. Um, I know you're having fun. All right. Talk to me. Uh, type in more stuff. What can I help you with today? What do you need to know? What do you hear, hear to you? Uh, what do you need to hear? And, and, uh, and also, I'm going to give you another update here, but also um, uh, I'll ask you this question. But make sure you make the answer pertaining to groups. What keeps you up at night? Only when it comes to groups, please. Let's keep it focused. All right. I know we all need a lot of help. I should speak for myself. And that, that kind of help you can't give me, but uh, <laughs> let's, let's focus on groups because I want, I want this session together to be meaty. Um, I just pre presented to the Memphis coaches, uh, network. I think I may have told you that uh, two weeks ago. And I asked that question, what keeps you guys up at night? They're coaches, they're entrepreneurs, just like you guys. They're in business for themselves, just like you guys. Um, and the challenges are, are so, so incredibly similar. It was really great. And asking that question really brought out some good stuff. Uh, the other update I have for you, I told you about the experts library. For those who just joined us, I added all of my favorite books to the experts library. So check it out. Um, I asked you if you guys caught Keith and Alex on the panel. Um, oh, I want to make this announcement. Um, I am going to do a special edition. Ask Stuart hour. Okay. It's kind of a panel, but we're not going to come with a format. It's just like this, but I'm going to have a guest with me. Uh, he's the vice president of industry relations with travel insured. His name is Isaac Simra and he's a, he's a new friend. Uh, we've known each other for a long time, but we've never really been close friends. Uh, I just felt that there was a lot of insurance, a lot of, uh, insurance questions coming up, a lot of uh, questions about it. Uh, and I'm preaching in boot camp to include insurance in. I didn't realize that we're not supposed to say the word included, insurance included. Did you know that? You can't say insurance included. You can include it, but you can't put it in print that you've included it. Am I confusing you? Because I'm confusing me, but it's a matter of semantics. So I just spent a good amount of time researching this uh, with their group expert there. And I, I've invited Isaac in. So mark this down. May 13th, you're the first to hear of it. May 13th, we're going to have a special Ask Stuart hour. I don't have the times here, but it's an open forum just like this. And we're going to open it up to the whole industry too. this particular one. Uh, I'll, I'll send you the RSVP soon on that one. I'm excited. Uh, Kyle, 
Kyle asks, could you share some best practices or approaches to getting high-end or local car dealers such as Lexus, Mercedes, BMW on board to market a luxury group cruise to either their organization and to their customers? Okay, uh, I'll read it again real quick for those of you because I know you can't see when other people type in. Could you share best practices to get high-end and local car dealers such as Lexus, Mercedes, BMW on board to market luxury group crews to their organization and other customers. It's a great question. And by the way, if any of you have had any experience in this area, please do share. I'll get back to the question board in just a second. Um, over the years, I've seen agents uh, try to do things like this. I've seen agents um, work in and uh, actually sell them uh, car dealership incentive certificates uh, or dollars off towards a cruise is sort of a, a booking incentive, uh, booking uh, buy this car, get this gift incentive, um, uh, to some degree of success. I've never really seen really big success, but then again, I don't know everybody and I, I'm not, you know, I don't crystal ball everything here. I don't have the news feeds for everybody who's done this. Um, I would say to, to number one, to come up with a really compelling reason. And you may not know that reason, Kyle. You may not know. You're in travel, right? You may not know why a high-end luxury car dealership would even need this. Why would they want to do it? Before setting out to have a uh, to make a pitch, have a conversation. And ask that car dealership, luxury or not, but here we're talking luxury, say, what keeps you up at night? What's what's a challenge here? And can travel be a solution? How can we make travel be a solution, a group be a solution? Now, Kyle, if you're just talking that, you know, they have a mailing list of people who own these cars or who lease fancy cars um, and they want to do a group. Well, I mean, maybe they've never thought of it, but what, in your mind, what what would be the value for them to do it? The value for you is you're going to make some good money. It's a great golden list. I know what you're thinking, Kyle. You're thinking, I want to go after those customers. But well, why on earth, why on earth would a high-end car dealership want to share their customer list with you? Maybe for loyalty. Now, pay attention to this. As I, as I think about this, it could be a loyalty issue. You know, every, you know there's Lexus out there. There's a... Uh, um, uh, t uh, t uh, t begins with a T. My goodness. Tell, tell, <laughs> Tesla. <laughs> yeah. Tesla. High end car. A lot of competition out there. Lincoln coming out with the new Lincoln Continental. Old school Lincoln Continental. Love it, right? Um, would they want to do a loyalty program? Now, I don't, I don't know if all people who drive Lex, Lexuses, or is it Lexi, I don't know, want to go on a trip together and hang out just because they own a Lexus. But maybe there's another reason. Maybe you're going to plan a um, work with the owner of that Lexus dealer, and you're going to plan a financial management cruise. What do these people need to know? What do they want to know? What else do they have in common? Why would why on earth would they all want to travel together? They don't know each other. They already have enough friends. They don't need any more friends. But why would they want to go on a special cruise event that's sponsored by, you know, the Lexus dealer uh, uh, around the corner? Maybe because there's a, an author, a chef, a publisher, financial management, something that that would 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 help them. Um, maybe it's wellness. I mean, I don't know, Kyle. Does that help? And I'm going to check the boards here to see if you or others have comments here and other issues to discuss because I've been blabbing away here. Um, Mitch. Uh, do it. Okay. Uh, hang on, Mitch. I'm going to get back to you in just a second. Um, how many people escort their groups? Lori, how many people escort their groups? Which, which are you referring to? I'm trying to connect the dots here. Um, Oh, Jenny, by the way, that May 13th um, Ask Stewart Hour special edition is two to three. But I will, Eastern, I'll get you the information on that. Thank you, Jenny. Um, okay, J Sharon's got a new thing. Uh, Jalal, oh, wow, this is really cool. Everyone has typed in stuff. This is really awesome. Um, okay, so, and Mitch. 
Okay, Mitch, I want to tie this up with you, Kyle, and then I'm going to go back and we got a lot of great stuff coming through here, which I promise I'll read. Mitch, to tie up to what Kyle had brought up, um, the group allowing loyal customers to join uh, the dealer owner, a form of dealer incentive to best clients. Yes, absolutely. So I think we're, we're coming we're in the same direction here, which is um, – uh, uh, actually, this is a new element, Mitch. Thank you. So, Kyle, back to you to doing a thing with the uh, the car dealership. Uh, you know, sometimes people will travel with a group leader uh, if if they're well respected. If people want to rub shoulders with them and get to know them, uh, Kyle and others. What if what if the owner of this car dealership is well known in the community? What if they're very philanthropic? You know, uh, what if they've got a big name out there? And and what if you know, people who, who rent the, the Lexus would say, boy, that would be really cool. We're going to get to meet him or her or travel with them as a couple. We're going to make new friends. We want to be in that circle, that influential circle. So, yeah, that's another great, great idea. And that's a great way to find group leaders, too. I mean, I mean, that's why for you guys, why can't you do a president's cruise? You're the president of your own company. And if you believe you're influential in some particular area and you pick a destination around it and people want to be with you, they want to be with you to escort the group, um, that's a great way to find a great group leader. So thank you for sharing that. I hope that helps. Um, uh, uh, Mitch, you're too much. Phil Anthropic, this guy by the name of Phil, he owns a lot of car dealerships here. Oh, my gosh. You got to see that one to, to, to really get it. Okay. So let me go here um, to um, – Lori, Lori, how many people escort their groups? So that's the question you want me to ask of everybody on the line here. So everybody on right now, how many of you escort the group? And it, not just say yes or no, but also say if there's like a minimum group size that you would do. You know, anything else around it. So if I could, uh, let's just turn this, the question, Lori's question into um, – Make a statement about escorting a group. Do you do you try to do it often? Do you do it often? If there's a minimum size, just give us a sentence that I can read, sort of a best practice of sharing, because this is a great issue uh, to discuss. I'm a big, big, big believer that you should escort the group um, if you even think perhaps they need you and that you shouldn't lose money on it, that you have the right to earn money on that because you're working your Butsky off on that. If you already escort groups, you know what I'm talking about. So we'll come back to that. Uh, Sharon, Sharon Sloan. Welcome, Sharon. Um, I have a group tour in a year being led by a rabbi. We don't have anyone signed up. I have advertised a few times and went through social media. Need big ideas on how to address this. Is this typical of groups? We didn't have interest, interested people at the time when we put this together. So are reaching out to anyone. Thanks. All right. I hope everyone heard that. I'm not going to read it again, but Sharon, uh, this is a, a great thing that you've shared with us here. And uh, I, I got a bunch of comments to make here. I think, number one, I would hope that you and others uh, really use the how to pick the winners document. It's my uh, uh, group viability test before taking on a group that may sound great. Run it through the group viability test. How many of you have read that document? Uh, because one of the key issues is there, uh, who's your audience? Who are you selling it to? Uh, and what's the, what's the affinity? You know, what's the compelling reason for them to go? All right. So, so here, here's what Sharon, what I would say. At this point, it, it may not be all lost, but uh, let me start this way. Number one, the rabbi. Okay. Uh, the people want to, what's the compelling reason why people would want to travel with the rabbi? Okay. Uh, is it because he, and I don't know if it's a he or she, uh, is it because he's got a, a magnanimous personality? Uh, do you have events planned? That he's going to run prayer sessions or spiritual workshops. Are you going to a destination, a cultural, uh, a, a sort of a religious retreat? What is the essence? Just because a rabbi is a group leader doesn't mean people are going to flock to it. Pardon me. Pardon me right? There's got to be a compelling reason that affinity, the magnet, has to convince people to travel when they would not normally travel, to go to a destination where they may not normally have gone, to go with people they may not normally have ever considered going with. 
and to pay for something they may not even have a budget for. It's got to be really strong. And sometimes it's best planning the group, not just with the rabbi, but with everybody who would travel with the rabbi. So they almost feel like they have a skin in the game. They have a stake in it. They're all stakeholders and they help produce the product, the package. So number one, the affinity. Okay. Number two, who's the audience knowing that? I mean, is it the congregation of a temple? Uh, does this rabbi have a blog, uh, have a Twitter account, and do they have a following? So, you know, it, it, it has a lot to do with who are fans of the rabbi as the group leader, you know, and the affinity. And how can you reach these people? Because I don't think group can work if you're just going to do general generic advertising to the public. Not going to happen. You're, that's that that becomes a speculative group, or that just becomes a that becomes a very expensive group. Your acquisition cost goes up. Why? Because you're doing advertising. And and, and when you do have a group, you, you just don't want to put it out there and sell it. You want to have a launch campaign, a big launch, because the earlier you get people signed up, and you guys all know this, who've done groups before, the earlier you get the momentum going, the better. Because you know what happens, momentum. I think it look, it'll look, you know, it goes down. But if the momentum, if you don't come out of the gate with momentum, you ever, you ever go see a rodeo? I went to a rodeo down in Texas a couple of years ago. I was doing a speaking engagement for American Express. They brought us to a rodeo. Two things I learned from it. Number one, these bulls are huge, absolutely huge. Number two, I'm deathly allergic to bulls. Um, Yes, I should have realized that because I'm allergic to horses and cats and rabbits too. Uh, in any case, uh, when that gate opens up, that bull charges. It's crazy. And that's the way a group has to be launched. Crazy. You've got to get early signups, especially VIPs, so that the momentum comes out strong and it keeps going strong because it will peter out. Okay. Sharon, I, I hope that uh, helped you. And uh, uh, I want to see if anybody else has posted anything else. But but also, uh, I don't know how far you are into boot camp, but I do have modules on it. Um, I think it's in week four, which is uh, avoiding group disasters. And at some point, at some point, Sharon, you need to make a decision to save it or sever it. Not savor it. Sever, S-E-V-E-R. Save it or sever it. Uh, so you're not putting all this time and energy and potentially money into it. You know, is the group leader, your rabbi going to, going to perform as a great group leader? What, what are they, ha do they have any stake in it, any skin in the game? So we may make sure you see my module on getting the group leader to commit and deliver. Is the affinity strong enough? Who's the audience? You know, is the value proposition strong enough to get people to go away uh, with this group or else walk away, start again, start fresh. I hope that helps. I do. Okay. Let me take a look. We got here. Uh, Jalal, welcome Jalal. I'm glad you're here. Uh, what keeps me up at night is if the, uh, if the group's uh, gone on the trip and the dynamics of the people isn't right. Oh, geez. There's fights and arguments taking place. Oh, that's bad. And you even put in, in capital letters, fights and arguments taking place. What to do? Uh, separate them and make separate, uh, 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 a different trip or send them home. Wow. So Jalal, what I'm hearing is that uh, this has happened, perhaps, uh, and there have been uh, situations between the guests. Um, uh, and, and do you actually send them home? Wow. This is uh, this is this is tough to hear. It's it's disappointing to hear. Um, it's hard for me to give you an answer uh, because I think every case is going to be different. No doubt. If somebody's behaving really poorly. And if they're on a cruise ship, you almost want to turn it over to the cruise ship or to the hotel, especially if it's a cruise to security or something, if it's that serious. Um, but clearly, I think, and I'm, I'm going to give you my answer from the heart here. Um, if they're traveling together as a group, they have something in common. They may not know each other. Maybe it's a hobby. Maybe they're, they're there for a particular reason to learn something for educational purposes, whatever it is, or to come together because they, again, share something. But I, I would, I think it'd be wonderful to have a sit down, to have a, a quiet sit down and work it out. Why can't we all be friends? Why can't we just be friends? And I'm serious. 
And whoever you're with, if there's another group leader, the group leader, so it's not just you, the weight isn't on your shoulders. Um, or if you're on a ship or if you're someplace where somebody from that establishment, <clears throat> maybe they have a group coordinator who you like, who you trust. Hey, come sit with us and sort of have a, have a circle and work it out. But if they're being disruptive, yeah, I mean, you're sending them home is tough because they're going to want their money back from the trip and it could cost them airfare. So that's why there's a lot of details I'm not sure of. Um, but I, I just, I hope that never happens. <laughs> Lori, uh, I have a big corporate group going in Mexico in May. This is the third year they have booked with me and the group leader always complains that there are issues with rooms and the first day is stressful for her. So I'm going a day early this year and I'm hoping to go over the rooms before they arrive to get any issues straightened out before they go. I have never done this before and hope that it's worthwhile. But then I am leaving. I will not be available if there are any issues for the rest of the day. I'll still be in Mexico, but at a different resort. I'm nervous about being somewhat out of pocket while they are gone. Lori, this is a wonderful, wonderful thing you've shared with us here. There's several messages for us to learn. Thank you for sharing best practices, and I want to address your concern. Number one, and by the way, folks, listen up if you can. Keep typing in. I promise I'm going to get to as much as I possibly can. This is great. This is so much fun. Seriously. Um. I think it's a splendid, phenomenal idea to get there before. In fact, when you get to uh, week four, you'll see one of the PDF documents is 92 things you must do when escorting a group. 92 things. You don't have to do them all, but be prepared to do at least some of them, many of them to avoid a disaster uh, like them being unhappy. So let's say if you're not, if you are escorting the group, you absolutely want to get there before they do. Meet with the, the local coordinator at the resort on the ship. Do a walkthrough. I use the word walkthrough a lot in boot camp. Do a walkthrough. Now, if the group leader comes down early too, or if you want to do the walkthrough with the group leader, Lori, or everybody else, you can do that too. And I, uh, But I think it's ideal if you could do the walkthrough with the local coordinator first and then do the walkthrough with the group leader. So by that time, things have been fixed. And, and then if you have to leave, you have to leave if you can't stay. I would love for it if you could stay, at least for the first couple of days, if not for the whole thing, because you can be in the background behind the scenes, but a step ahead. You understand? A step ahead to avert possible disasters. So the group leader has no worries, no concern. And they should pay you for that privilege of, of totally being there and making sure there's no stress at all, right? Being that go-between. Now, if you have to leave, Lori, and you can't stay there, you're going to be looking at other resorts. Uh, I I'm I got to tell you, I wish there was a way where you can uh, be a phone call away. I'd like to say text, but it's international. I don't know if your group leader is going to be paying for international service and you too. However you do it. However you do it, work with that group leader. And I believe, yes, and this goes for everybody here. If you're not escorting the group for any reason, that group leader needs to be able to reach you 24 hours a day, 24 hours a day, whether it's by text, which I think is the most brilliant way to go, because if there's Wi-Fi, uh, maybe you can send texts through certain next networks so it's free, but Find out. There's, there's got to be Wi-Fi solutions or ways you can do this where you will never, ever be out of contact because you want to be there. You want to be responsive. And when you are, that's being remarkable. You're delivering remarkable, what I call loyalty great service. And they will never, ever, ever travel without you because you're always in pocket. You're never out of pocket. I love the way you put that too. It's brilliant, Lori. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, okay. Jenny, I have an organization I want to approach for group travel. I think I should offer them something before I mention the trip. So I thought I'd offer to speak at their next meeting. How do I contact them? I have their contact inf information from the web. Do I email? Call. Not sure what to say. Do I tell them I, uh, I saw where they did a fundraiser with a winery uh, that I follow? I hope eventually to get both wineries list and the organization's list for the trip. Uh, I love it. Yes, I think you should contact them. Um, if not, just stop in, make a phone call. 
uh, actually send an email saying you're going to be calling. Just see if you know who you should be talking to. I think that's important. And I think you should absolutely tell them how you heard about them and where you found out about them. Start off, learn, take a page from Dale Carnegie of his book, How to uh, Make Friends and Influence People. Um, pay them credit. Uh, compliment them. Say, listen, I've seen this. I've heard this. I've read this. This is awesome. It was great. I'm very impressed. Stop. They're going to say, oh, thank you. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. And you say, look, um, I have an idea to float by you because I, I, I mean, have you ever entertained the, you know, a speaker to come in? Um, I, I'd love to, and I have some ideas. Can I share them? So take little baby steps. So they realize you're not selling because if, if they know that you're trying to sell them something right off the bat, the door is going to close. Nobody wants to be sold to. They want friends. They want to make a new friend. They want a strategic partnership. And the whole idea, the way to get to first gently get in there is that you, by you coming to speak to the group, um, it can't be what you want to talk about. It's got to be what they need to hear. Let me say it again. It can't be what you want to talk about. It has to be what they want to hear. So before you say, oh, I can come in and present this and I can do this and blah, blah, blah. Eh, say, what, how, the, these are my fields of expertise. How, how can I help? I mean, what keeps you up at night? What keeps you up at night? How can I help you and, and your, your, your customers? You know, if it's a loyalty thing. I say, well, do you mind if I come back and give you like three or four different topics I can come in and talk about? You know, ease your way in, build that relationship. And your cheese, your cheese, because we talked about who moved my cheese earlier, is ultimately you want to get those lists and get the group and do some fun stuff together. So I hope that helps. Uh, you're really onto something here. We got a lot I'm going to keep going through, Jenny. I do hope that helps you. Um, and just in terms of contact, just so you know, um, it's great if you know somebody who knows somebody there, but it's going to be just as good if you can tell them where you saw them or that you do business with them. Start off with some kind of connection so they know you're not soliciting. In fact, you can say, listen, you're in business for yourself. I'm in business for myself. You know, we're both local business people here and I saw you do this da, 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 and I had an idea, you know, uh, here's my expertise. What, what, what do you guys need? I, I'd love to to do something with you, a strategic partnership. Let's have some fun. Let's help the people. Okay. Um, uh, Mitch uh, suggested something going back to the car dealership. Uh, a lot loyal, yes, lo loyal customers to join the dealer owner, uh, and it's an incentive too, right? So I think we're we're definitely good there. This is all all really good. Um, okay. Uh, Good stuff. Uh, Debbie. Okay. Jenny responded to the question about the escort. Excuse me one second. Some organic tea today. No coffee. Already had my coffee. Um, Jenny says that she uh, always escorts the group. Well, if there are at least eight cabins. Okay. So there, there's, there's your response uh, regarding uh, escorting from Jenny. Deb says that she escorts some groups. Okay. Groups that, that she has organized that are her ideas. Okay, so in that case, you're the group leader. You're the Pied Piper, uh, and you go because you're you're the group leader. You're the focal point of it. So that makes sense. I get that. Jalal, I had escorted uh, with a minimum group of 15, um, and uh, uh, let's play to a trip to the UK. Okay, escorted with a minimum of 15, um, and... and Said, said he was going to escort, but he got ended up getting 12 people going. Uh, but in 2015, he plans to do a group trip to the UK or Europe. Um, so it looks like, um, uh, Jalal, uh, that you uh, offered to escort with a certain minimum number of guests who, who buy. And one thing I will tell you there is that um, you really want that group leader to want you to be there to escort. Okay. And also, again, you got to bake in the price points there too. You got to bake in your travel and, but you got, you have to tell them what you can do, why it's so important for you to be there. 
right? And you know what? Let me just wrap, rattle off a couple things while you want to escort. Number one, uh, you're going to reduce stress. By being there, you're going to reduce stress. Number two, you're going to somehow add convenience. By you being there, you're going to add convenience because you're going to be a step ahead. Step ahead. In the background, but a step ahead. Okay? And number three, you're going to add value. Being there, you're the expert too. You know, um, you can help. You, you're going to be able to be an asset to all the people if they have questions. Have a little hospitality desk or something like that. Right? And number four, you're going to increase satisfaction. You there, you, you're going to make sure everyone has a great time, just in case, for all of the above reasons and the fact that you're there to watch. So make sure you set up a compelling reason why it's important that you are there. Jalal, thanks for sharing. Uh, Kyle, Kyle says, I do not escort, but my size group ideal would be about 15 people, um, and it would be involving high-end cruises. Okay, I get it. I get it. That makes sense. Um, oh, Deb says that that group viability document is great. Awesome. I'm glad that you like it. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Kyle, thank you for your response. Many of my clients would have demographic psychographics that would own certain high-end core cars. Okay. I think using the rub shoulders celebrity status and creating an experience they can brag about is a great idea. Bingo. Love it. Love to hear it, right? People like to be in circles like that, man, and they want to connect. And like I said, especially if that owner – uh, has as an agenda too. Maybe they want to forward a fundraising event. I don't know, or speak, or lecture, or learn. Who knows? Uh, but uh, it's that celebrity status. Bingo. Love to hear it. Thanks, Kyle. Um, uh, Sharon, um, uh, I I didn't have a Stuart Cohen boot camp to guide me. And with Sharon, we're talking about that prior group with the rabbi who is the uh, the group leader. You have given me some good things to think about. I have a better direction how to approach the rabbi. Beautiful. Excellent. Awesome. Yes. Um, keep in touch, Sharon. Let me know how that goes. Kyle, let me know how that goes. Jalal, let me know how it goes uh, with your UK group too, if you're going to be escorting. And and I sure hope that you haven't had those issues of people fighting in the past. And I hope that you never, ever, ever do. None of you. Eeks. Um, uh, Jalal, I learned a great lesson from that movie, uh, My Life, My Life Ruined, where they Try to make a tour escort's life difficult, uh, but guys were not getting along. Uh, okay, but one of them brought them all together, and I keep seeing that movie. It's so hilarious. Maybe you could recommend it to the group. Okay, so it sounds like it's a funny movie where everybody in the group, uh, uh, they try to make the tour escort's life difficult, and I really hope it's a comedy. Uh, it's called My Life Ruined, I believe. Is that right, Jalal? My Life Ruined. I don't know if anybody else has seen it, but I'm going to write that down. My Life ruined because it sounds funny frightening actually uh uh jenny you're most welcome uh, we talked about your group uh, uh approaching those uh, the wineries uh mitch um you and your guest mentioned buying wholesale and marking up in my experience that requires paying for the block in advance how are you guys suggesting we do that without not needing to take out a loan uh wholesaling and marking it up buying wholesale well when, when i say wholesale. Um, I mean, you know, with most big ship lines, uh, you have to put, you may have to put down, it's everybody's rules are different, some kind of a deposit to hold the group space. Now, when you say buying wholesale and marking up, uh, I don't know if you're talking about uh, the actual block of space with the line or in a river cruise, for instance, with a river cruise. So I'm going to make this a two-part answer. If it's a river cruise, um, uh, if you really want to get a phenomenal wholesale rate, you can do a part charter like for, uh, AMA, for instance. Uh, you can do a part charter for as, many, as small as 10 cabins and you get a tremendous – you get a net rate. It's tremendous because I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm looking at doing a possible uh, a possible group in uh, 2016 and, and um, an even bigger one in 2017. A discussion for another day. So I'm getting to really know some of the different rules and terms and conditions, how river cruises work. But uh, when I say also packaging in and, and buying things at wholesale rate, let's say you want to include in a, uh, a shore excursion. Okay. Uh, let's say you want to uh, uh, build in a special dinner or some kind of a special event that Mitch, you can buy in advance and make a deal with that, with that restaurant or with the resort company like 
yeah, I'm going to promote my own company. I'm a uh, I'm an owner of resortforaday.com. You probably heard me say it before. I try not to throw it in your face because I'm not here to sell anything to you, but I started that company. I founded it. I built it from the ground up about seven years ago. Um, and exactly five years after I started the company, um, it was purchased. Uh, I don't want to say purchased because I'm still a part owner, but I have a partnership, uh, uh, World Travel Holdings, and they're taking it to levels that I could – I only dreamt about that. I didn't have the resources to. In any case, um, you know, like that or other uh, short excursion companies uh, say, listen, I'm going to have X amount of people. And, and who knows? Maybe they'll give you a net rate. Uh, you can you can buy in bulk. And, yeah, you may have to lay out a couple of bucks or work out a payment plan with them. You know, see if you can wait and start to get some deposits in, Mitch, so that you have that money to put out. I mean, I hear you loud and clear. I mean, I'm really tempted to do a part charter with uh, with this with the River Cruise Company next spring, but I got I got to fork over a lot of money. It's a risk because it's non-refundable. I get it, but with every big payoff, there's always a big risk too. So you got to do a, a balance. Mitch, I hope that answered your question. Um, uh, uh, Jalal, yes, the movie is My Life in Ruins, and it shows how the escort can overcome obstacles, and it also shows how the group dynamics can work and be worked out. I love it. My life in my life uh, in ruins. Thank you, um, Mitch. Doing a group, a group, a net group versus a commission-based group with amenity points. Bingo. Listen, my friends, I am all about doing groups on a net basis. Whether the cruise line or hotel or uh, insurance company, because you know some insurance companies will give you net rates uh, for your groups too. Um, doing it on a net basis. Uh, I don't think you need to be held hostage to the commissions that they're willing to pay you. You have every right to earn more because you're rendering expertise and phenomenal services. So I say, I say net it down and build in the margin that you need to make. I just want to see who's joined us. I know it's, we only have like five minutes left. It goes so fast. Um, Jean Ann has joined us. Welcome Jean Ann. It's good to have you here. Uh, who else has joined? Nope. That's it. So we oh we got a great group in here today. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so anything else that I haven't answered that I need to go back to? Now is a chance. We've got five minutes um, that I want to address it. But we I think we've really really had some. I hope you agree too. Some great conversations uh, that you've all brought up. Uh, and, and the uh, let me see if there's something I want to uh, mention. The escorting thing, I think, is it's hugely important. Uh, hopefully, when you get to week four, you get to see that important document. Um, uh, pick the winners. Uh, Sharon, uh, go back, go round back with the rabbi. See what you guys can do. What's his role in this? Is, is he promoting it too? Is he excited about it, inviting people? But why? Are they just going to rub shoulders? Is he like a, a celebrity status? You know, we talked about that. Um, uh, let me think here. What else? Uh, tell me, wait, let me see. We, look, we talked about that raffle earlier. Um, Mitch, I uh, like the charter. Don't typically want you to pay. Uh, don't typically, they want you to pay for space up front. Uh, absolutely. That's why, uh, that's why in this case, Alma, uh, is willing to give me such a phenomenal, or you, such a phenomenal rate, uh, because it's considered a charter. And when you, when you buy it, you own it. The same goes for a big ship charter. I've been involved in several big ship charters. Um, and first of all, the contract is this big uh, with a big ship. But um, when you buy it, you own it. You can't return it. You can't get half your money back. You own it. But that's also because you get a, r a ridiculously low rate and your margin, op the upside is huge. It's really, really huge. So I hope that I hope that helps. Uh, Gina, when will the replay be available of this? Um, here's what I do. As soon as we're done, top of the hour, I download it. I have to convert it. I just edit out the beginning and the end if there's any whatever, and I upload it. I actually upload it to YouTube, and it's strictly audio. Remember that, guys. So uh, I don't record my face. You, I don't think unless – I'll ask you this question. Do you want me to record these as a video so that if you miss it, you can go back, you can see me? I don't know if you need to see me or not. All I'm doing is flailing my hands and drinking my tea. Um, but right now I do it as strictly audio. Let me know if you want me to do it any other way. So I'll, I'll try to get that up as quick as possible. And I'll post it on Facebook, Jean Ann, so you know when I have posted it and it's available. Um, 
uh, Jalal, how to overcome the gatekeepers in senior homes uh, for uh, for his accessible. So Jalal, you're a specialist in accessible travel trips. I just wanted to, you know, it's nice if you could all share, if you guys have an expertise, a niche within a niche, uh, and this is Jalal's niche, um, how to overcome the gatekeeper in senior homes um, that he's having difficulty overcoming. Many meetings and no, yes, suggestions very similar to, and we're going to run out of time here. So we, I may have to address this offline or next time. Um, is some, similar to what I said, I think it was to Jenny earlier, which is uh, coming in with a sales approach, I don't believe uh, works all the time. Coming in from a, hey, what keeps you up at night? What do you need? Here's what I do. How can I help? How can I help? All right. And as you build the relationship, you say, you know, have you ever considered doing this? Or would a cruise, would a trip, would a group trip solve the problem? Because this is what I do. I'll come and I'll talk. We'll speak. I'll give them tips on when they're traveling, uh, how to uh, be, be happy when traveling, when they have, uh, when, when they, uh, uh, are, are required to have, uh, whether it's wheelchairs or scooters, whatever it is, the accessibility is, um, come in as the expert, Jalal. Jenny, go in as the expert. Sharon, go in as the expert in your field um, and see how what you can do can help. Don't go in selling something because they're going to give you all kinds of pushback. They need to look at you as the solution person. You have to uncover their problem. And you have to provide the solution. And hopefully a group trip is that solution, ultimately. I hope that helps. Quick answer to that. So I'm going to see. We just got uh, uh, 30 seconds left. G Dance's video. Mitz is audio. Um, all right. I'll see. This one, I, it's too late to do the video. I have to do all kinds of special settings. But that's it. We're going to close out. We got 15 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. I am so delighted that you're here. Uh, Kyle, thanks for joining us. He's our guest in boot camp today. We hope he joins. Uh, Clavia, who is brand new. I'm sure she couldn't make it in today, but I'm excited that you've been here with me today. I wish you all happy sales. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful you've been here today and that you're in boot camp. Bye.